All right, welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be making a currency converter. So we just look at here though, how the final project is going to look like. As you can see, we have a pretty big list of currencies. And if I just go ahead and I'll do, I don't know, Mexican pesos. I'll put in one, it'll give me the amount. And two, three, four, five, so and we can do pounds euros and we can continuously change them um and we can even try uh, japanese yen as well so pretty simple pretty basic and let's get right into how to make this project all right, so here I created a brand new project. So first things first, let's just go ahead and start creating the user interface. So we're gonna need three things. We need a picker view. Let's drag it out here. We're going to need a label. And we're going to need a text field. Okay, let's go ahead and start constraining this. So we'll just go ahead and make the picker view zero, zero, and zero. The text field is going to be 20 points from the left, 20 points to the right. And we'll keep it at eight from the bottom. And we'll give it a placeholder text. Enter amount. And then the label, we don't want to make this big. So we'll go ahead and change the font to a large title. And we'll center it around here is fine. And 20 points on both the left and right side. And 100 points on the top will do. And then we'll center it. Okay, so that's our basic user interface done. Again, if you're going to make this into a full-blown app, feel free to make this colorful and as aesthetically pleasing as you wish. But now let's get into the coding portion. So we're going to open up our view controller and our main storyboard. And we'll go ahead and create a little section here for our IB outlets. So we're going to need this label, we'll just call this price label. We'll call this one text field and this one we'll just call it our picker view if you're working with uh, other people on this project uh, feel free to make this more descriptive but just for tutorial purposes we're going to keep this nice and simple so now we're going to be taking a look at the api we're going to be using so let's go ahead and close out of the storyboard because we're done with that and over here this is the api we're going to be using it's from exchange rate api I'll provide the link in the video description and right here is the url that we're going to be using so we just go ahead and click on this we'll be presented with this json data now this isn't exactly readable so i'm just going to go ahead and copy this whole thing and use this json viewer.stack.hu and i'm just going to paste in the json data here and go into our viewer let me go ahead and make this full screen and as you can see here, we have all of these um, points here. So result, success, terms of use, yada, yada, yada. We don't care about that. Um, what we want is the rates. So here are the exchange rates. So the basic provides us is US dollars. And we can see right here, euros, um, all these other currencies. So let's go ahead and enter back into Xcode. And we're going to make a new file. It's going to be a Swift file. And we're just going to call this exchange rates. Okay, and then here we're going to want to make a struct. So struct exchange rates, make it conform to the codable protocol. And what we want is the rates. So we're going to create a constant called let rates and it's going to have a string and a double. So it's gonna be a dictionary, an array of dictionaries. And that pretty much does it for our 
JSON file that we're going to be using to decode it. So let's move back into our view controller now. All right, so in our view controller, we're going to create our first method and it's going to be our method to fetch the JSON data. So we're going to do func fetch JSON and then here we're going to do gar let URL equals URL. It's going to be a string and it will paste in that URL key, the API key we have and do else and return. Afterwards, we'll create a URL session dot share dot data task and we're going to need the one with the completion handler and then we'll put in our URL here and just go ahead and hit enter so it'll complete the closure for you and we'll put data response and error so in here we're going to handle a couple of different things so handle any errors if there are any we want to safely unwrap the data and then afterwards we want to decode the JSON data Okay, so let's handle the errors first. So if error is not equal to nil, then we want to print out the error and we just want to return now. And now we'll safely unwrap the data. So guard let save data is data else return. And now we'll decode our JSON data. So let's do a do catch block. So do catch and in our do block we'll do let results is try json decoder dot decode and our exchange rate dot self from our safe data and then afterwards we'll just want to print out results dot rate and we'll complete our catch block here. So if there's any errors, just print out that error. And then we'll want to make sure we call dot resume. And then we'll call our function in our view did load. So let's go ahead and run this now. And as we can see here at the bottom, we have successfully decoded our JSON data. All right, now that our JSON data is successfully decoded, let's go ahead and get it into our picker view, which at the moment is currently displaying nothing. So I'm just going to stop running this and we're going to make two new properties here. One of them is going to be a variable. I'm going to call it currency code and it's going to be of type an array of strings and currently it's going to hold an empty array and another one called values and this one's going to be an array of doubles and initialize it with an empty array okay so then we're going to have to conform to the ui picker view delegate picker view delegate and the ui picker view data source and here in our view below, we want to make sure we assign ourselves as the delegate and as the data source. So picker view dot delegate equals self picker view dot data source equals self. And it's going to yell at us because we have not conformed to the UI picker view data source, data source protocol, but we'll go ahead and do that right, right below here. It's fine. So we'll go ahead and do a number of components. And we'll just return one. And then here we do number of rows in components. We're going to leave this blank just for now. And then we'll do title for row. And then finally, we'll do did select row. So down here in our fetch JSON data, instead of just printing this out, we're going to want to append the values into our empty arrays here. So we'll do self dot currency code dot append and we'll make sure we do contents. Oh, it's not appearing. Append contents of results dot rate dot keys and then we'll do self dot values dot append contents of results dot rates dot values and now here into our 
piggy view data source methods we're going to do number of rows and components it's going it's going to be returned currency code dot count and then title for row is going to be return currency code at row and down here we want to make sure that we're not doing any ui work on the anywhere except the main thread so we're going to do dispatch queue dot main dot async and we'll do self dot picker view dot reload all components and then just for now we'll comment this i will come back to this later but if i run this i should be able to see our picker view now displaying the currency codes and it is okay so perfect let's move on to the next step so we'll go ahead now since we're going to use this go ahead and uncomment this and right here we're going to create a new prop a new property so we'll do var active currency and we'll set to zero dot zero make sure it's dot zero that way it becomes a double and then here we'll go ahead and right below our view to load we'll create our update views so do objective c func update views and you'll see why we why we made it into an objective c in just a moment and we're going to take in a double and then we'll do guard let amount text equal to text field dot text and then let the amount text again if you're working with other people you will want to be more descriptive with um what you're calling your variables and then we'll do double amount text else return and we'll do if the text field dot text is not empty so it's not an empty string then we'll let total equals the amount text multiplied by the active currency and then our price label dot text is going to be string and then format this we're going to round it to do two decimal places so we'll do the percent dot two f and then our total and then right below here we'll do text field dot add target we'll do self our action is going to be pound or hashtag whatever you want to call it selector of the views we can go ahead and get rid of that portion and for dot editing changed and then finally let's just go ahead and finish up our final did select row here so we'll do active currency is equal to values row and then we'll do we'll call our update views method and then the input's going to be our active currency and we go ahead and run this now if we go and i don't know let's go to euros and we type in our one you can see that it's completely working So that pretty much wraps it up for today's video. You have a working project. Feel free if you want to make this an app you want to put on the App Store. Feel free to design it and add other functionality as you wish. Uh, but that's pretty much wraps up today's video. So if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Make sure you uh, subscribe for future content and let me know any other future tutorials or subjects you would like me to cover.